Memories of Creature 88 by user Regal Legal Eagle Chapter 5 Patrol Vincent had never experienced anything like his dance with the energy form. He still had no idea if that was some sort of memory of his mother pulled from his brain or something else, but he was sure that he needed to get his mind off of it. The synth had faded from his system shortly after Cav called and he synced his memories before getting dressed in silence. It seemed like tonight was going to be busy if the reports Cav had mentioned were any indicator. Something had riled up the residents of the city. Patrols were out and sweeping, of course, but they were more effective at showing up after something had happened than stopping it before it ever started. Knowing he'd be in a fluid situation, he opted for the patrol harness. It had more protection from blunt force, and it wouldn't explode if he died like his assault harness would. Next was his extending stun baton, and a set of brass knuckles he slipped into the pocket of his jacket. Some of the Xenos were big fuckers, and a little soft skin like him needed the extra help which was why he also had a knife in his boot, on his harness, and in a hidden pocket in his jacket. Carrying around a talon rifle didn't make sense either, so instead he clipped two queers to his belt. The fact that they had made an energy weapon analogous to an SMG and called it a quick-unloading energy repeater just made him shake his head. When he first called them a queer, oh, the look the Yervish gave him. Figuring he had enough weapons, he pulled on his black jacket, the phoenix on the back of it standing out against his dark clothes. Then he pulled the mask on, and nodded at his reflection as he left the armory. The Zenos in the city parted for him regardless. No one wanted to get too close to a shade. But when he wore the mask, they weren't just getting out of his way. They were watching to make sure that he wasn't coming after them. He had a badge on his belt, but that felt different here than it would back on Earth. They didn't see a beat cop wandering his rounds, willing to chat and shoot the shit with store owners. And if he even tried that, most of them would be too scared to talk back, and his handler would ask why he was wasting time. The hierarchy had one purpose for sending Vincent out on a patrol. Kill people before they kill someone else. Or kill them before they kill again. Calling him to a crime scene, getting his read on a case, that sort of thing happened in private. He walked out into the hall then, tapping the comm on his wrist speaking through the mic in his mask. Handler, this is Creature 88. Testing tracking module. Creature 88, I have your tracking module green and clear. You're unusually formal today. When was the last time you followed protocol? I figure I'm done fighting you on it. I'll just focus on fighting criminals. Throw me anything you think is worth my time tonight, Handler. I'm not feeling picky. If there was something Vincent understood, it was fear. When the door to the lift opened for him and the Zenos inside saw who was joining them, he saw it flash through their various eyes. When he stepped inside and turned around to face the door, he could sense their unease, how they tried to scoot away from him as subtly as possible. He remembered some jackass back on Earth talking about how animals could smell fear. What that idiot didn't realize is humans were animals too. You had to know what you were sensing, but it was there. He lived in Sector 5, where the vast majority of citizens wouldn't dream of breaking any laws, and they were terrified of him. They feared him because of what he did. He fought, he brawled, he killed. They didn't truly grasp these concepts, but understood they should avoid them. They knew he dealt in death every day while they saw the dead only occasionally and most often in a hospital after a disease or at the end of a long life. This made them nervous to be around someone who was so fully encased in the dealings of violence and death. Especially because he kept dying and returning. A Yervish patrolman who gets too courageous and dies in a stupid fight only has one life to give the city. At the last count, Vincent had given it 104 lives. On the next stop, everyone suddenly got off leaving Vincent alone. He smirked and pushed the button for level 30 and locked the lift. Anything above level 30 would be minor enough that even a fresh-faced rookie who hadn't earned whatever it was the Yervish used for their kabuki makeup ranking system could handle. The lift quickly dropped him into the depths of the city, as the window behind him grew darker and darker, but he didn't bother to look. He knew what the city had to offer. 
Finally, he came to a stop and he unlocked the lift, stepping out onto the Grey Market District. He heard the lift behind him quickly shut and rise back up. There was an energy to the crowd before him that he felt on certain nights. Sometimes crowd had a certain electricity to them, as if they were all charged and energetic, excited about a sports team doing well or something along those lines. This wasn't like that. It was more like a fog that crept in from the dark. Zenos pulled their clothes a little tighter. They didn't loiter much. They weren't here to window shop tonight. They were here to buy and move on before someone else moved on them. He heard the howl of some gray market animal in a cage somewhere down the concourse. The animal could sense it just as well as he could. His mask picked up on the various illicit goods and minor crimes, but just as before, he didn't care about the gray market or graffiti. However, he knew that he needed to make his presence very obviously known tonight. He needed to let them know he had a new toy. Help! Thief! He heard some ostrich-looking Zeno cry out as he saw a Vernek sprint off. The Vernek were reptilian, spry, quick, but no one was faster than a bullet. Vincent pulled his magnum free of the holster, clicking back the hammer with his thumb and firing. The boom made everyone shriek and duck for cover as the Vernick cried out and tumbled to the ground. He'd been aiming for the kid's legs, but he wasn't sure what he got. Walking forward, the Xenos were silent, all crouching down as they watched him walk down the street. The kid was crying, clutching at his left leg as he saw blue blood seeping out. He pulled a mil-spec compress from the table of a slack-jawed, fish-faced Zeno he didn't recognize. When he reached the kid, he crouched down and inspected the damage before slapping the compress into place. Kid, if you get to a clinic soon, you'll be fine. You won't even have trouble walking about half a year. But I'm not sure how fast you'll run. He then pressed the barrel of his magnum against the Vernick's knee, watching the kid's eyes go wide with fear. That is unless I put a bullet in your knee. Then I'll be sure you won't be running anywhere. No! Please! Am I going to ever see you stealing from people again? No! Are you going to clean up your act? Maybe become a bartender, something easygoing. Don't have to walk too much. Y yes Anything! Vincent stood up then. Remember, kid, there might be some tough figures in the dark of this city who are plenty dangerous. I'm worse. Who said he couldn't do community outreach? That was one troubled teen who'd never become a career criminal. He walked forward into the stalls, before climbing up onto some antique table that was likely a cheap knockoff. Citizens! You know me. I'm the Shade. I'm sure you've heard of me by now, even if this is the first time you're seeing me. Tonight is not the night to trifle with me. Or any patrols. Tonight is the night you want to go about your business quickly. He stressed the word as he looked around. Then go home. That kid will walk again someday. The next thief I see tonight will not. He didn't share with them how lucky the kid really was. He'd only winged him and could have just as easily left the kid dead or paralyzed. But they didn't know that. They knew he had a very loud weapon and had just shot someone with it from rather far away. He looked around at the various Zenos around him. After his little speech, he doubted the normal citizens in the Grey Market would give him any trouble. There is no one here meaner than I am. There is no one beyond my reach. If you discover a murder, if you know a black blood dealer, report them. If you don't, and I find out, I won't be kind. He glanced around one last time and jumped down from the table, the Zenos parting around him as he walked. For the moment, the crowd was silent, thousands of eyes watching him walk through the market area, until he reached a lift on the far side that headed deeper down into the city. Handler, got anything for me? Sector 32. Reports of violent bike gang, assault, armed robbery, illicit goods dealing, possible murder of opposing gangs. Vincent pressed the button for 32, keeping his magnum in the other hand. Then he opened the cylinder, replacing the round he'd spent on that thief. 
When the door opened to 32, he walked out into the sector. He saw a burning bus just in front of him, so he figured he was in the right area. As he walked out into the street, he heard the growl of engines, and turned around to see about five Zenos cruising around the corner on mag bikes. They were driving way too fast for any inhabited sector, of course. They probably knew where he needed to go. He looked them over for a moment and walked into the middle of the street facing them. No one beat Vincent at chicken. The Zenos on the bike roared down the street as Vincent stood his ground, staring at them. He could see the confusion and unease on their faces for a second, before the one in the middle turned hard, which of course hit the bike next to him, who hadn't expected the maneuver. They turned and twisted into the third, and soon three Zenos were launched from their bikes, which in turn flipped and crumpled, smashing into one of the support beams in the sector. The Zenos flew through the air, hitting the ground in various positions as they were left groaning and clutching broken limbs. They'd live. The two remaining Zenos veered around Vincent, bringing their bikes to a stop down the street. What the fuck, man? Don't you know who we are? One of them was saying. It was a species Vincent didn't recognize. They had sort of primate features and thick green fur, but jagged tusks extended from their mouths. Vincent walked up to the Zeno on his bike, pulling him off of it and slamming him to the ground before stomping on his face with a slight crunch as he knocked the Zeno out. Then he climbed up onto the bike and looked the last Zeno in the eyes. You're taking me to wherever you fuckers hang out. Got it? The Zeno gulped and nodded quickly as he turned his bike to keep going the way they'd been going before Vincent interrupted their drive. He had little trouble keeping up with the monkey as they wound through the streets the Zeno constantly looking over his shoulder at Vincent. Soon they turned down a dark street in the sector, cruising through the open doors of some abandoned warehouse. There were two bikers at the entrance, with second or third hand Gervich blasters, and they watched Vincent follow the other into the interior of the warehouse. It was pretty much what Vincent expected, a rough circle at the center of the place where the bikers had congregated. There were crates they were sitting on or leaning against, some sort of drums here and there with fire in them. The monkeys were laughing and howling about this or that, and he could see what looked to be a few females of the species sprinkled throughout. As they kept making noise, Vincent dubbed them howlers and drove straight into the center of the group before stopping his bike. Suddenly there was silence as he climbed off his bike and looked around. Who's your leader? The howlers looked up to a particularly large biker up on top of two stacked crates. I am... What the hell are you doing here, patrol? Shouldn't you be waiting on backup? He laughed at that as Vincent glanced around. There were probably around three dozen here. I've got reports of illegal activity, and I saw that burning bus I'm guessing is your work. I fucking told them. No one runs a vehicle in this sector without my say-so. They didn't pay the toll. That's stopping tonight. No more violence. No more drugs. No more hassling good citizens. Got that? The Howler laughed loudly at that, living up to Vincent's chosen name for the species. Who the hell are you going to do about it, patrol? Arrest me! Vincent smoothly pulled his magnum out, shooting the Howler in the head as red blood and chunks of brain matter spewed out the back of his head as his body toppled over, falling to the ground behind the crates with a meaty thunk. "'Who's your second in command?' Vincent asked, and saw the howlers immediately look to another big biker, who had been leaning against a crate to his right. He turned, and the monkey leaned forward, wide-eyed as he tried to pull free a weapon of some sort. Vincent caught him in the chest, as the force of the bullet slammed the Zeno against the crate behind him, before he dropped to the ground. Who's your third in command? Wait, wait, no, please. The third largest of the pack was on his knees as Vincent turned. Even on his knees, the Zeno was taller than Vincent. Likely they could have torn him apart if they'd rushed him. But they hadn't. We, we'll, we'll clean up. No more of that shit you talked about. No, you're going to clean this hab up. Help the citizens. Keep it clean. And if you hear about any illegal activities, 
you're going to report it to the patrol. Am I clear? Clear! You're, you're crystal clear! Vincent climbed back on the bike he'd taken to get here and looked around, seeing the shock and confusion on the faces of the bikers. If you make me come back, I'm not going to be so nice. Then he turned forward and set off back out of the warehouse. Handler, what's next? Sector 37. Patrol has two fugitives quartered in a diner. They have hostages. Vincent checked the minimap in the HUD his glasses displayed, driving the bike to the lift closest to the diner. He dismounted the bike and boarded the lift, taking it down a few levels, replacing the two rounds he'd used while he waited. He walked out into the street and saw the patrol unit outside of the cafe. They were using their speeders as cover, so likely the fugitives had been shooting at them. While they were all crouched down, Vincent simply walked through the street up to the senior team leader. All right, what we got? Two felons, aerobic and a Serbian slasher. Vincent thought back to the one who'd killed him earlier. The Rovic has some sort of armor. They have a number of hostages they've been firing on us sporadically. We asked for a sniper team. Sorry, you just get the shade, he said. Tell them you're sending in a negotiator. The Yervish stared at him for a moment. You most certainly are not a negotiator. Just fucking tell them. The Yervish hesitated for a moment and then spoke into the comm on his wrist, so it would be projected through the speakers on the speeders. Attention, felons! We're sending in a negotiator to discuss your demands for the hostages. Vincent walked out, then, approaching the diner. He kept his gun holstered for now as he stepped into the building. Typical place for a lower hab. Long counter, some booths, cups of recaf, and slag spilled across the floor. Greasy food fit for various species on plates. The Rovic was wearing some sort of metal suit, which made Vincent think of knights and kings instead of Zenos. The four-armed, four-legged fat rhino was gripping a tall chervish to his chest. The chervish looked like large beetles that walked around on their hind legs. It made sense to use one as cover since they were almost as big as Rovix, but not as strong. To the other side was the Servian slasher he'd been told about. The skinny bug was standing over a few cowering Zeno hostages. Hold it there, patrol! We have hostages! The Rovic growled, holding a Tybar cannon to the Chervish's thorax. Why do you think they sent in a negotiator? Hey, before we get into the nitty-gritty, I need you to do a self-scan real quick. Vincent pulled his magnum free of the holster. We use these to identify VIPs so we can get them proper service. With this, I can get you two into a ship and off-planet going wherever you want, nice and quick. The Rovic took the gun with one of his four hands. How's it work? You look straight into that long bit, and then pull that trigger. This better not be a trick. Hey, look at me. I don't even have a Talon rifle on me, do I? What could I do against that suit of armor? The Rovic pushed the Chervish away, and held the Magnum up with his hands as he looked straight down the barrel. Vincent turned to look at the Servian slasher. He waited to hear the shot before quickly grabbing the queers from under the back of his jacket, jerking them free as he unloaded into the Servian at nearly point-blank. The bug jerked and staggered before falling to the ground dead. Hearing the weapons, the Yervish team rushed into the diner and then stopped up short as they saw Vincent simply reloading the queers, clipping them back into place, and then picking up his magnum off the body of the Rovic. You're clear, senior team leader. The Yervish patrol didn't seem to know how to react as he walked out of the diner, replacing the one round he'd spent inside. Handler, what's next? Sector 40. Club called Throb has reports of black blood dealing. Possible front for further illegal activity. Hierarch thinks sending a patrol would scare them off. They want you in there on your own. That's fine. He followed the display through the sector to get to the next lift. This time, he noticed some graffiti on the side. The blood brings new life. He hoped that was just the insane ramblings of a junkie and not something more prophetic. The lift stopped and he stepped out, walking down the street as he looked for the club. 
It wasn't hard to find, thankfully, as he could hear it a ways out. He tapped on his wrist, activating the mask's audio dampeners, and everything went quiet. There was a line of Zenos trying to get in, with two Gurgat bouncers at the door. Gurgats were mountains of muscle. Smooth heads, tusks, four eyes, about as big as a Rovek, but with all their muscles concentrated into two arms. He didn't even stop, he just walked past them, and they didn't make an effort to stop him. They might have said something, but he couldn't hear it. Soon he could feel the music, however. The throb of the beat obviously giving the club the name. It wasn't a bad beat. One, one, two, three. He just wished his hearing was more in line with more of the frequencies most Zeno music was made with. Various colored lights inside were flashing and flaring. To the mass of people jumping and dancing, it was likely intense. But his mask filtered it all out, letting him see clearly but in black and white. Shoving his way through the crowds, he tried to stick to the edges of the dance floor, making his way towards the bathroom. With all the various species, they just had unisex bathrooms, with special stalls for those who couldn't just use the urinals or toilets. While he did have to take a piss, he wasn't here for that. There was another line for the bathroom, but it didn't involve using the facilities. Shoving his way through that line as well, he saw a Vernick at the front of the line. This wasn't a kid like that thief back at the Grey Market. This was an adult. He was about as big as Vincent. They also were one of the few Zinnos he'd seen fight with something approaching martial arts, likely because they were fast but not strong. This one was busy pulling vials of black blood from his jacket and handing them to Zenos who held credits out, however. Vincent reached into the jacket pockets, slipping the brass knuckles onto his hands as he approached. The Vernick looked up and started to move, but it was too late. Vincent's fist was in motion. Colliding with his jaws, he felt a crunch and saw the Zeno's head snap to the side, blue blood flying out of his mouth. Vincent gave him another two quick jabs to the torso before gripping the dealer's head and slamming it into the bathroom window, cracking it and smearing it with more blood. Then he yanked the Zeno away from the wall, shoving him towards one of the stalls before firmly kicking the Zeno in the chest. The Vernix slammed back into the door busting it open as he sprawled out onto the floor next to the toilet. Vincent was about to drag the dealer up to question him, when he remembered he had to take a piss. So he walked into the stall, kicking the Vernick's feet to the side so he could take a proper stance, and opened his pants to relieve himself. Once he was done, he zipped his pants back up and changed the filter on his audio dampener to pick up voices, before crouching down and jerking the Vernick up by the front of his shirt. The Zeno groaned and opened his eyes before trying to pull away in fear. No, no, you're staying right here. I want to know where you get the black blood. The Zeno opened his mouth, but Vincent held up a finger. No, I wasn't done. He tugged the Zeno's head to the side to let him see the yellow liquid in the toilet. I just pissed in there. If you don't tell me, I'm going to drown you in that toilet. Upstairs. They give it to me upstairs. I just work here. Vincent let the Vernick go as the Zeno fell back to the ground. Get a new job. He turned to see some small Zeno reaching for one of the vials of black blood that Dealer had dropped, while Vincent kicked his ass. Vincent simply stepped on the creature's hand, hearing it squeal in pain as he crushed the appendage into the vial, breaking it as well. Then he pulled his foot back as the creature clutched his now-wounded hand. Get a new hobby. He walked past the Zeno junkies who were now backing away from him and out into the club. There was a set of stairs against a wall, and after pushing his way through the crowd, he headed up the stairs and opened the door. There was a small hallway leading up to another door with another Gurgat standing in front of it. Vincent walked towards the bouncer, but before he could convince it to step aside, it lashed out, catching Vincent in the mask with a nasty right jab. It was like being smashed in the face by a two-by-four, as Vincent crumpled to the ground, feeling pain in his... Damn it. Feeling pain in his teeth and jaw, the Gurgat reached down, squeezing his head as it started to pull him up. Most creatures, when knocked down by a Gurgat, stayed down. Vincent pulled the knife free from his belt and jammed it into the bouncer's thigh. 
The Zeno dropped him and hollered in pain before kicking Vincent in the chest. This time he went flying back and groaned. Some ribs were broken. Definitely internal bleeding. The Gurgat wanted to make sure he stayed down, it seemed. Vincent saw him raise a giant foot, but he rolled to the side as it came down. Then he grabbed the knife still in the Gurgat's thigh and yanked it down as hard as he could, feeling sinew and muscle rip and cut. The Gurgat screamed in pain as it collapsed to the ground. Vincent pulled the knife free and began to drag himself up the Zeno's body by jamming the knife in as high up as he could reach and then pulling himself forward. Soon, he was on the Gurgat's chest. It whimpered and reached up, starting to squeeze Vincent's head in that big hand. As he felt the pressure on his skull, he quickly jammed the knife into the Zeno's throat, up into the brainstem. It gurgled and died as it let go of Vincent's head, leaving it throbbing in pain. He groaned and stood up, activating the emergency beacon on his comm. A patrol would be heading his way immediately, but he couldn't wait. He kicked the door open as he saw a collection of Vernix and Gurgats, with more vials of black blood and credits on the tables. They saw him as well and started to pull out their weapons. Vincent shot the Gurgats first. One to his left slammed into the wall and slumped down while the other was sent flying through the window behind him. He could hear the surprised screams of the Zenos in the club. The Vernix were quicker, as his first shot at one went wide, smashing through vials of black blood. One at the back hid behind a big desk while the other two flipped tables over before hiding behind them. Vincent groaned as he could feel the pain spreading through his body. The internal bleeding was likely bad. One of the Vernick popped up, shooting him in the shoulder with some little energy blaster. Vincent cursed and swung his magnum, blasting the Zeno in the chest. As he approached the other flipped table, the Vernick hopped over the edge, tackling him to the ground as Vincent fired off a round past the Zeno's head. Vincent gasped as he felt a knife slam into his left side when he was knocked down. The Vernick grinned, assuming victory, but instead Vincent got his magnum up under the Zeno's chest and pulled the trigger, seeing a moment of surprise cross the Vernick's face as he collapsed onto Vincent, coating him in blue blood. Groaning, Vincent shoved the body off of him, slowly staggering to his feet as he approached the desk, setting his now empty magnum on top of it. The last Vernick looked older and held up his hands. Wait! I, I'm unarmed and important. You can't kill me. Vincent felt cold and pain all over his body. He wasn't going to last long at this rate, but the patrol had to be close. He sagged to the ground behind the desk, next to the last Zeno. Pulling a set of cuffs from his harness, he slapped one onto the Vernix wrist and one onto his own. The knife was still in his side and he groaned, pulling it free, tossing it aside. He figured he'd wait here till he died, or the patrol arrived, whichever came first. Then he saw another Vernick walk into the room. This one had different coloring, and seemed to possess what the Vernick would consider handsome features, a very distinct face. The older Vernick cuffed to Vincent spoke up. Cassus, get over here! Help me drag this piece of shit! We need to get out of here before a patrol arrives! The Vernick slowly walked closer, seeing Vincent bleeding out and the older, worried Vernick next to him. Then he looked out through the window into the club. Patrol! Everyone stay where you are! Sorry, I'm getting out of here. Wait! The older Vernick cried as Cassus pulled out his tie bar cannon, aiming it at Vincent. Don't do it, kid, Vincent growled out. But the Zeno smiled. Killing you? will make me famous. He pulled the trigger, and everything went black. Vincent opened his eyes, stepping out of his pod, naked as the day he was born. He looked down the row of pods and waved at his original, in the big case at the end like he always did. Then he started to pull his clothes on. I'm guessing I had an eventful patrol then, Handler. You did indeed, Creature 88. It was cut short, however, by a raid on a club. You captured what could be an important felon. However, you missed a Vernick who killed you. Ah, that's all right. Can't get them all. Did they recover my black box? 
Of course. It seems like that Vernick took your new sidearm, however. What? Are you fucking kidding me? I just got that damn thing. Vincent growled as he tugged his clothes on a little bit faster. We need to interrogate the Vernick, but he knows the legal system rather well. I was hoping you might be able to get something out of him. Yeah, that's fine, but not until I get my magnum back. What? It's just a sidearm creature, 88. Given to me as a gift. He tucked a tie bar cannon into his holster and zipped up his jacket. It shouldn't be too long, but bring the prisoner up here to the ship. I don't want him to be too far away from my pods. What? Why? That's against regulations. I'd have to ask the hierarchy. You'll see. But tell them it involves a very special interrogation technique that's guaranteed to work. Very well, Creature 88. But find your sidearm quickly. Send the black box to my apartment, so I can watch it and see who killed me. It won't take long to track the piece of shit down, I'm sure. What was my kill count on the patrol, anyway? He glanced at the Yervish who checked his data slate. Nine. It's pretty good. Nine kills, one death. I am pissed about that magnum, though. He walked through the pods of the ship, ignoring his usual unease as he headed for the airlock, so he could catch a ride to his apartment. He normally didn't give a shit if someone killed him, but some punk had just stolen his magnum, and he'd be damned if he lost that toy so quickly. He'd have to make sure everyone heard the new rule. Don't fuck with the Shade's weapon, or he'll hunt you down when he next rises. It would be a learning experience for the Zeno.